Hi again. Okay, so here's my little notebook cover. So this is for a real notebook that you actually write in. We're not talking about anything computerized. So it's just to hold your notebook in and you just take this off and you open it up and you have a notepad and a pen in here and then you have another place to put bits of paper. All right, so this was my original one that I was making up just to have a bit of a play with it. And um, I have satin stitched, double satin stitched around the outside edge to form a beautiful binding. And I'm gonna show you how to put the grommets on. And I'm actually using a lingerie elastic, which is for bra strapping because it's a really nice firm elastic and it sits nice and flat. So that's the elastic that I'm using. So round this outside edge, not all of you ladies will be able to do it quite as wide. This has been done on a machine uh, 780 and it has a nine millimeter stitch width. But a lot of you ladies have got machines with a nine millimeter stitch width and this is a double um, satin stitch. So I'm gonna show you that shortly. You can make these any size and for anything you need. So I've made one for my e-reader. So this one here is smaller. This is eight inches um, across, whereas that one is 10 inches. And then you just take the elastic off. And instead of putting in a pocket, I have just put two bits of elastic to hold my e-reader in. And I can still read it and everything without it moving. So it's very, very good. And I'm gonna show you how to make these today. So I'll fold that one back up. I love the fabric, I think it's gorgeous. And while I'm showing you these, I'll show you the other ones that I've got made so you can see them. So this one here is a fun and funky fabric. And um, what I've done inside this one is the spots. So that's what it looks like without a book and a pen in it. And I've done a pink satin stitch, but I've left the black in the bobbin and threaded the eye of the bobbin case because I think it looks fun because it's for a young girl. So I think that looks a lot of fun. And um, the product I'm using today is a wonderful product. It is um, called Fast to Fuse. So it's a very firm, stiff product and I use it for all my bag making. And it's very fine, but it's strong and it's fusible on both sides. So when I use it, I can iron my fabric together and I don't have to do any stitching over it. So it's a lot of fun. If you would like to do stitching all over your work, so you don't need the fusible one, you buy Timtex. So Timtex is exactly the same as this, but it is non-ironable, all right? So that's the one I'm using today. So here's another one I've done, and I've done this for a girl who is a dairy farmer. And um, I have done the cows on the inside, so I'm going to get a pad and pen. I'm sure I'll buy a cow pen and a cow pad, haha, -ha. and that's what it looks like on the outside. So I think that one's a bit of fun. And I have been busy because here's all the other ones that I'm making at the moment. So this one is all power fabric. So you can see I've got a little bit of work to do. This one is just a K facet. And that's what that one looks like. This is another one similar to my iPad, but it's for a smaller notebook. So this one fits this size notebook. Yeah. Oopsie daisy, lost the lot. So this one is for a smaller notebook and this notebook only cost me 50 cents to buy. So you can pick up these very, very cheaply. I'll put that one away. This one I have made for my mother because it's a music theme. So I have to just trim all this off and look at the fabulous fabric I've got on the other side. So I think she's really gonna like that. She's always losing her pad and pad. And when it folds up, it will look like that. So I think that's gonna look really, really nice. I've actually made um, one for myself and one for my sister. So my eldest sister, I'm making this one. And look at the beautiful fabric. And that's what it looks like on the other side. And this fabric here is our latest Christmas fabric that's just arrived. I think it's beautiful. So obviously you could use it for anything, but that really suits her, that fabric. So I like that. 
and the last one I've made for myself and this is going to stay in the shop and that's going to have a pad and pen and the girls can write notes for me in here because they give me these tiny little bits of paper and they hand them to me and I lose them so I've used a sewing theme fabric so it looks really really good so they're very very simple and they're very very quick so today I'm going to be using doing another music one this one's for a man so I've chosen this fabric here and on the inside it's got another musical fabric here so I just put wrong side to wrong side onto my fast to fuse and I'm just going to iron this like a sandwich oh, not that you'd iron a sandwich but I've sandwiched up the bits of fabric so just press this very well both sides all right and just make sure it's really really firm so make sure your irons hot you don't use steam just a dry iron and press up both sides and it never lifts it's an amazing product so turn it over and do the other side because it actually won't press through you need to do both sides and then just trim up any little edges that aren't perfect with your rotary cutter because you want it nice and square before you start in your notes i will um, you will have both sizes that i have made and i've also made a passport holder which is a bit of fun but my sister's gone on holiday today so she's taken it with her so i'll make another one of those and show you it's fun really fun and in the passport holder I've made sure that there is a pen in there and a little notepad because when I go on holiday I always want a notepad to write things down and um, so here we are is your front and your back now the first thing you need to do is you need to work out which way it's going to be folded because whichever way is the right side and facing up the right way you're going to curve off the front edges so I'm going to do that now and you can either just um, go into the kitchen and get a plate and use that as your curve but I've got a pretty good eye so I'm just going to curve off one edge like that and I'm cutting that up there because it wasn't square and then I'm just simply going to sit this curve here and I will do the same on this edge here. So I'm just copying the curve I did so they end up the same. Here we are. Now I'm just going to make sure this is trimmed up perfectly before I start. You want that edge to be nice and straight because you're going to be satin stitching it. Do the same to this one, make sure it's really square and nice and tidy and exactly the same to the end so just make sure you've done it perfectly this is where your rotary cutter and blade comes in and your rulers come in well so am I happy with that no see it's still a little bit um, loose on that edge so I'll just trim that up a bit more I've got more fabric than I have of my fast diffuse here we are and again I can see that's not perfect you need to do that now Gosh, I'll end up with no, nothing left. Here we go. Happy with that now. Now I can see it's not pressed enough, so I'll give that another quick press. I can see just in the middle there I've missed a little bit. So make sure you do that. Now you're going to put your markings on for your spine. So I have to have two markings here and two markings here. So the first marking... Oh, I need to get one that I've already done so I get the markings right because I've got my notes in front of me so my first marking I'm going to use my little charcoal liner which are brilliant and it's going to be on my curved end three inches from the end so I'm going to measure three inches across and I'm going to draw a line then I'm going to draw another line half an inch away. All right. Then I'm going to turn it around and on this end I'm going to draw a line 
three and this one is actually three and two eighths, which is fine. So this spine can actually be, oh no it's not, what did I say? Sorry, three and seven eighths it is. Oh no, I'm going from the wrong end. So should we try that again? Third time lucky. It's actually, it is three and seven eighths. So you draw a line there and then another one half an inch away. So you should have two lines, two rows here and two rows here. And now you're going to straight stitch down those to form your spine. So if you needed something thicker, you'd make your spine bigger. All right, so I'm gonna do my two rows of straight stitching. And just reverse there, come to the other end, and reverse, cut your thread, and then do the next one. So make sure that you have got the right colour in the bobbin when you're doing this, because you're actually sewing on the wrong side. So make sure that you've got the correct colour in the bobbin and cut your threads as you go, or else you'll get into a mess like I do. Make sure you trim everything up as you go. It makes it so much better at the other end. Okay, now I'm gonna do this end, so I'll turn it round to make it easier. Then I'm gonna mark where my grommet's going to go, and the grommet is that round ring. Now your grommets are actually for the top of curtains, <laughs> so you might find them at a curtain shop if you don't come into a house store regularly. So um, that's actually how we got them. So you can purchase them from a curtain shop or a sewing shop, because us patchworkers use them. But I do know not everybody has them. I'll show you what a grommet looks like. This is what a grommet looks like. You have two pieces and one has some rings on the inside and one has some little sharp spikes. And they're only plastic and they clip very, very well together. And so we need to make a hole for these. So our grommets are going to be going halfway across here, I'll mark it on the wrong side so you can see it, halfway across here from this width and one and a half inches down, all right? So you need to mark your halfway mark and I know that this is eight inches across, I keep turning my ruler up the wrong way, so I want to mark it four inches there and I want to mark it one and a half inches from the end. Okay, now when you buy your grommets you'll get a little um, circle so you know how big to do it. So I'm just going to use one of my circles I've already cut out from all my other ones because I'm going to keep these and use these for my foot book. So I'm just going to pop that on, oh, which is one and a half. Yep, that mark there. I'm just going to pop this on top, pretend that's my template, and I'm just going to mark around that hole opening. Alright, so there's my mark for my grommet and now I'm going to cut that out. Alright, so I've just drawn a circle, the centre being one and a half inches and four across from here. Alright, so I'll cut that out now. So you just have nice sharp, sharp scissors for this job. So I'll show you that. So you're just cutting it completely out and making a circle. Now as I don't have very good upper body strength, I need something to help push the grommet together. I'm a bit, bit of a weakling. So I'm going to put one side of my grommet onto the right side. Oh, actually, oh, that's all right, I'll use this color. One side on there, lay it down and put the other side 
straight on top of my grommet, but I can't push that down hard enough. So I need to use something. So I've worked out that if I put my grab it on there, says me, who's still weak, and give it a push, I think I've got it together, I have, then it holds together. And it did, I heard the click, you may not have heard it, but that's what the grommet looks like. So now I'm ready to put my pockets on. So I'm going to make a pocket out of this fabric here. So I'm just going to sew around three sides. So I'm going to put right side to right side. And so up the side, across the top and down the other side to form a pocket. Now your pocket needs to end up between these two rows of stitching. So it can't be any wider than between those two rows of stitching. So make sure when you're making it that it's smaller than that. All right? And have I got it up the right way? Just checking. Because I think that way's up, so I need to go this way now. So just sew three sides, or if you've got enough fabric, you just fold it in half. So I need to just measure that my pocket is going to be no bigger than, say, four and a quarter finished. So let me just measure that. Oh, that's way too big. I made too big a pocket. I'm just going to trim that down. So it looked too big. So I'm just going to trim that down so that will end up four and a quarter finished. So I'm going to cut that over here. Trim off some. It's too big. Now when I stitch it, that'll be perfect. So be careful about that because you don't want to make it too big and do what I just had to do. Now what I like to do is I then like to iron a piece of interfacing across the top so that this will make it nice and firm because you're going to be putting your notebook in it. So it just firms up the top edge. So just iron a bit of interfacing on, doesn't matter what sort, just any sort of interfacing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip across these corners so I can turn my pocket through. So clip across the corners, and then you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it through and use my point turner because I love it. So turn that through. You also know which is the right side because you can feel the interfacing on there. So it is this side. It's nice and firm. And then just push your point turner to get your nice points on your pocket. So much better. And then give that a press. And there is my gorgeous pocket. So there's my pocket. Now I'm going to do the little flap, which is this flap here to hold my notes, and I'm just doing a small one. So I have found the fabric out of my scraps of my outer, and I've found the music notes, so I'm going to use that on the inside and then I'm just lining it with some scraps of my other fabric. So I think that's going to look really, really cute. It's not supposed to be cute, it's for a man, but it's going to look nice. Iron one side and then iron the other, and remember, trim it off before you do the next step. Now this one, I'm going to be putting on the inside, I'll turn it around that way, on the inside here, so I'm going to curve off this edge. So make sure you check which way is up and you've got it up the right way before you trim off this curve. All right? I'm going to throw something at the cameraman soon if he doesn't stop yawning. I think he needs to start learning how to sew so that he won't yawn so much when I'm teaching. So now I'm going to curve off the edge and I'm going to trim across the bottom 
and you've got a gorgeous little pouch. So this is going to have two rows of satin stitch on it. All right. So I'm now going to put it onto zigzag and I'm going to put it on the widest width your machine can do and right down to just two clicks so it'll be really close. Now, I'm going to run my foot, uh, my piece of fabric in, on the inside edge of my foot. Can we see? Hang on, I'll hold that down there. Like this. So it's just going to sew over the edge of that fabric. All right, so you just run, that's, that's where you're going to place your fabric. Just so you know, that's how I get a very nice, neat edge. So I'm just going to stitch a row of satin stitch. And then I'm going to go over and cover it again with another row of satin stitch. Oops. Phone's ringing because I forgot to put the answer phone on. Sorry about that. So do your row of stitching. And then you're going to go over that with a second row of stitching and that's how I get the beautiful finish on my satin stitch. And I'm using standard sewing thread, so standard metrosine in the top and in the bottom. And I've threaded the eye of the bobbin case to make it a nice tight satin stitch. Alright. So just continue around there, it's nice and easy, just the ordinary foot, you don't need to put any special foot on. And this is the outside finish that I've done on my notebook covers. So I've completely done the same finish, that's why it looks so nice and tidy. So what I do now is I've completely finished that outside edge with my double satin stitch. I think it looks amazing. Put it back onto straight sewing and get your little notebook cover. And you're going to put this on the inside and you're just going to stitch that to hold. So that will hold while you do your satin stitching. I think they're brilliant. They're so easy to do. Put your needle position to the right and you're just stitching around this edge just to hold it in place now for your pocket there we are for your pocket that pocket's going to sit just inside oops i've made it a bit long it's going to go to the i'll just trim off half an inch because I know the size of the notebooks now, I've made so many of these. So this is going to sit just inside like that, and I'm going to get two little pieces of elastic. So this, like I said, is bra strapping elastic, and you just cut it an inch and a half, fold it in half, and tuck it under on the right hand side, of your pocket and you're going to just use your edge stitch foot number 10 if you've got one and you're just going to edge stitch that at the same time as sewing on your elastic okay it's quite thick to hold and then get your second one and tuck that down a bit lower because that stops your pen from moving around I like having the two bits of elastic not one all right, if I go like that, you can see. So two bits of elastic, and I just pin that into there like that, and I'm going to use my number 10 edge stitch foot on those. Now for the other side, this is where you're going to be putting this in. This bit of elastic, you line up with your grommet, and it goes in under there. But just a handy hint, sew this side first. 
So this bit of elastic is going on to here. Hang on, I'll just pin this and show you first, because otherwise you get a bit confused. So this one goes under there like that, and make sure it's lined up perfectly. So I need to show you how it goes together so you understand why that is going there. So pretend that one's in there. Oh, that one's held in there. Close the book up, and this elastic holds the book. So it's going all the way around and back to here. So what we do is we fold that elastic under and we sew it onto that seam. All right, so that's why I'm showing you so that when you see it, take that out of there, you're actually sewing it onto this seam first, okay? Because you want to have that nice and tidy. So if I turn this back around here, I'm going to stitch that on and I want to do it before I put my pocket on so nothing gets jammed up. Okay, so I'm going to stitch this onto here, lining it up with my grommet. And then I'm going to turn it over and satin stitch it. So straight stitch, sew it on first. And then I actually satin stitch it so it's really, really strong. Turn it over and just satin stitch it, make sure it's very narrow. It just makes it strong because you're going to have a lot of pull on this. Oh, it could go a bit wider. Maybe about a two and a half width. There we are. And that's the reason why I'm also using the bra elastic because it's a very, very strong elastic and you know that it's not going to weaken like normal elastic can. Okay, so that's going to go there, come through, go all the way through and back through to there. So now, make sure you thread it through the hole. There we are, make sure it's flat and it's threaded through the hole. Flip this down and then you're just going to get the end of it and tuck it in by about half an inch. I've allowed half an inch allowance in your notes. Okay, so just tuck that in about half an inch and you're going to edge stitch that on. So if you get it all ready, you can edge stitch them both at once. So now I'm going to use my number 10 edge stitch foot and straight sewing and I'm going to put it on left needle position. So if you have a look, if I show you, you can see it goes there, it pulls through here, and it tucks in on there. Alright, so that makes it nice and easy for you to see. And now I'm going to edge stitch up this one and down that one. Okay, so I'm just going to run my edge stitch foot along the folded edge of my pocket. take the pin out as I go, lift the front of the, um, the little tag up so it doesn't get jammed and I'm just going to edge stitch that all the way up and then I will back stitch it to make it nice and strong. Then I'll just lift my work up, come to this side, forwards and back at the top to secure it or put your locking off button, lift this up to go over the elastic, take your pin out and sew down to the bottom. Now when I come to the elastic, I do go backwards and forwards a couple of times to make it nice and strong for where my um, pen is going to go. All right, and then this is the end of the pen and it stops it from moving around by having another elastic down the bottom. And then when you get to the bottom, just stop and straight stitch along here so it will hold it while you satin stitch. And there you have it nearly all finished. So the next step is just to trim this off to make sure it's tidy. Always trim as you go and you'll get a much better result of your work. So I'm just going to trim this off just to tidy it up. It's looking not too bad but it could do with a little tweak. And trim the side one up as well. It's amazing the difference if you just take the time to do this. There we go. And if I show you, you can see now what it's going to look like. And I will fold, oh, do some pressing, just some finger pressing down your spine. 
with this product and it will hold it really really well so just finger press down here to give it its crease lines so now you can see it's going to fold in there fold there and you just do it up like that turn that under turn that under and there's your nearly finished result so they're a lot of fun so now to finish this off all I do is open this back up and I do my double satin stitch around the outside edge so I'm going to put it onto zigzag and the widest stitch my machine can do is 5.5 on this machine so I go right out to 5.5 I start from one corner and I simply satin stitch right around the whole outside edge and then I go over it twice and I'm not going to do it all I'm just showing you so just go right around here I'll stop here and I'll just do it again go right around the whole thing and then do it a second time so that you get a wonderful result because once is not enough on something like this just so past here to show you what one once looks like and then what two looks like so you can see the difference it's amazing the difference it makes I'll just go up to my other fold line so I can show you Look at the difference in the quality of how it looks at the bottom and then how it looks up here. This one I've only stitched it once and this time I've stitched it twice. So it looks really neat and tidy. And that is all you do to finish it. Now when I've finished around this twice, what I then do is I get my fray check, which is this um, clear glue, and I just fray check this corner and this corner because these are the two ends where you've started and finished and it will stop it from ever fraying or the thread unraveling so fray check is wonderful for that and it dries clear all right so this one i think is going to look really fun and this is for a man so it's a very nice gift for a man okay so i hope you enjoy doing those i i just think they're just so much fun now there is another edge you can do on here. Once you've actually stitched your two rows of satin stitch, you can also put a cord on the edge. So I'll just quickly show you that with a scrap of um, a scrap of this product so you can see it because some of you ladies would never have seen it before and I think it's fabulous. So I'll just do it on a scrap and I'll get some plain coloured fabric so you can really see it because I think it's just fantastic and I just thought about it so I must show you it I'll just cut a bit of fabric I don't need to do two layers I can just do one what's amazingly about this this won't actually the heat of this won't get to the other side and it won't stick to my iron so I'll just quickly do one side so say you've done your two rows of satin stitching on with your fabric both sides oh it's hot this is a great edge so you've done one row just like I showed you and then you've done your second row sometimes some of the threads are a little bit untidy so I'm going to show you how to make it perfect you really do need the other bit of fabric on the back but it's okay it's just to show you it's amazing how the difference it is right so sometimes you get these little frayed little edges now to counteract that, 
get a bit of your cord, you can match up the right colour. I'm just going to do white so you can see it. Sit it beside your stitching you've already done. And what I use is my number six foot, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to show you can do it. Bring your width down to about three width and one length and zigzag over your cord and it's going to actually stitch it onto the edge of your satin stitch. It's really, really nice finish. And I've opened it up so you can actually see the zigzag that I've stitched. And you can use a different color as a feature if you want, but it's a really nice way of um, finishing off a satin stitch edge if it's not enough for you. Now you'll be able to see this lovely and clear because I've actually done white cord. So it is simply a zigzag that has then gone on the edge of the satin stitch and it makes a really, really nice finish. And I do that around placemats. And you could do it around these book covers as well if you like. So there's another little tidbit from me. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the class. I think you'll um, enjoy my new website that I've started. And I will email you all to let you know when you can go on to the new website. And it is just for Benina Club Online. So have a good month. And I will see you next month. Bye.